In this official video series, I'm going to show you how to add 80s style sound effects to your Arduino, Raspberry Pi, or the like using the sound gen. Fair warning, this tutorial contains sudden bursts of music, loud beeps, and other strange sound effects that your co-workers might find rather annoying. Headphones are highly recommended. Now, if you've heard of the sound gen and we're thinking it's just another MP3 player or some other sort of simple record and playback device, you'd be mistaken. It's not. Instead, it's a sound synthesizer. That is to say that it uses mathematical formulas, which use values that you supply to generate sounds in real time. All sorts of interesting and complex sounds, from music to alarms to beeps to touch tone to singing robots to zaps to sounds you have never heard of before. The sound gen has literally trillions of possible mathematical configurations. Here is what just a few of them sound like. Ten, nine, eight, no, eight, me. So if you're wanting to add sound to your project, then hang on to your headphones, because in each new video in this series, I'll show you how to use a different configuration complete with the features and functions that support it. I'll cover tips and tricks, reveal a secret or two, and construct an interesting and easy to build project that will demonstrate and explore the sounds that that configuration makes. In this video, part one, I'll do a basic overview of the sound chain and give you a sense of what this thing can do. I'll explain its block diagram, discuss the theory of operation, explore the kinds of sound effects it can make, and then show you how to make the sound gen make sound. So let's get started. The sound gen's block diagram, which shows all of the sound gen score components, may look complicated, but it's actually pretty easy to understand when you break it down. In the most basic terms, the sound gen is a sound synthesizer with six identical tone generators called voices. You can think of this much like six keys on a piano. But unlike a piano, where every key makes the same sound played at a different frequency, the six voices of the sound gen can be independently configured by a number of different controls to produce a variety of different sounds. These six voices are then functionally grouped together into two identical complex sound generators, which independently combine three voices in various ways to produce sounds that are much more complex and way more interesting than just a simple tone. To get a sense of what these two complex sound generators are capable of, consider this. Each one of them was designed to function like the vintage yet still popular AY389 series of sound synthesizer chips found in many different vintage computer products such as the Intellivision, the Spectrum, the Mockingboard for the Apple II computer, and many, many others that created the signature sound of the 80s video game. Tell me in the comments how many of these you recognize. <laughs> Additionally, the reason the sound gen has two complex sound generators is because that is what it took to duplicate the functionality of the wildly popular Votrax speech synthesizer, whose unique and fascinating mechanized voice not only became the standard of what people expected a 1980s robot to sound like, but was also the void of the 80s arcade hits Wizard of War, Gorf, and even the gibberish speaking Qbert. Now, in order to understand how to configure the sound gen to generate sounds like the ones you have been hearing, we need to start by looking at a single voice. As mentioned, all six voices are identical and consist of their own set of various controls that contribute to their final output sound. The pitch or tone of the voice is generated by a waveform oscillator, which can generate basic waveform shapes at any frequency between 1 1,000th of a hertz and 8 kilohertz. Each waveform has its own distinctive sound. The frequency of the oscillator can be set directly or varied over time by its ramp controller. Additionally, 
pulse width modulation, which changes the duty cycle of a square wave, and distortion, which adds a specified amount of randomness to the frequency, can be applied. The volume dynamics of the voice are controlled by an amplitude regulator, which can also be set directly or varied over time by its ramp controller. Additionally, an ADSR envelope can be applied, which, when triggered, creates an amplitude envelope with programmable rates of increasing and decreasing volume that result in that played on a keyboard sound. The ramp controllers, when triggered, will modify the frequency and amplitude over time at a specified rate until the frequency and amplitude reach a specified value. This allows one sound to morph into another, which is heavily used in speech synthesis because if you think about it, when you speak, your mouth continues to make sound as it moves from one phoneme's position to the next. To see what I mean, sing along with the sound gen a couple of times, paying attention to the sounds your mouth is making in the in-between phoneme positions. Yay, 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 We'll take a behind-the-scenes detailed look at how all these controls contribute to the final output sound of the voice in future episodes, but for now, Let's move on to how the voice output of the six voices can interact with and affect each other. As mentioned, the voices are grouped into a set of two identical complex sound generators. Each one is able to generate a complex sound by using a technique called modulation. This is where the magic happens. Using modulation, three simple sounds can be turned into sophisticated sound effects. Here's how it works. The waveform of the second voice is used to control the amplitude of the first in a process called amplitude modulation. What this means is that the final output sound of the second voice, whatever wave shape it might work out to be, is used as the volume control for the first voice. You can think of it like the wave of the second voice moving the volume knob of the first back and forth, which makes whatever sound the first voice is generating pulse like this. In addition to that, the waveform of the third voice is used to control the frequency of the first in a process called frequency modulation. You could think of this one as the wave of the third moving the frequency knob of the first, which makes its sound warble, like this. <laughs> Combining those two kinds of modulations together at the same time will get you a complex sound like this. Now, Remember how all the waveform oscillators have these different waveform shapes that produced these sounds? Well, producing sound isn't the only use they have. Using those different waveforms with varying frequency, amplitude, distortion, pulse widths on all three voices while modulating will give you a fantastically huge number of different complex sounds like these. <laughs> And don't forget, all of this is being mathematically generated in real time based on the values that you provide. This means that your Arduino or Raspberry Pi can change the sound it's currently making in a variety of different ways simply by changing the values to reflect some changing status in your project. For instance, starting with a complex sound of any sort, you can change the frequency of one of the modulation inputs based on the distance between a robot and a wall, which will create a distance indicator sound that changes as the robot approaches the wall. Or, starting with the exact same complex sound, you can send that measurement to the frequency of the other modulation input instead, resulting in a distance indicator that sounds like this. So at this point in time, I'm sure your mind is churning with possibilities, and you're probably wondering how to hook a sound gen up to your project. It's not hard. 
In the minimum configuration, all it takes is one wire, two if you count ground. Let's take another look at the block diagram to see what that wire does. As you can see, at the bottom, there's a series of control blocks which, of course, control all that sound-making stuff. And on the far right is a block called the Serial Command Decoder. This is the part that allows your processor to tell the sound engine what to do. It monitors a single serial input, which is connected to your processor through that single wire, and when it receives a command through that serial input from your Arduino or Raspberry Pi or whatever, it figures out what that command is telling it to do and does it. For instance, using the Arduino sound engine library, the command set volume is used to set the volume of the different voices. This command takes two arguments, the voice and the volume. The voice can be any number 0 to 5, which specifies the voice you want to set the volume of. And the volume can be anywhere from 0 to 99, where a value of 99 sets the volume to full and 0 sets it to silence. Predictably, 50 equates to half volume and 25 is quarter, etc., etc. The command set waveform sets the waveform of the different voices. This command also takes two arguments, this time the voice and the waveform. Again, the voice can be any number 0 to 5. The waveform can also be anything 0 to 5, where a value of 0 generates a sine wave, a 1 generates a triangle wave, and a 2 gets you a sawtooth wave, and so on and so forth. The sound engine library has named constants for these waveforms to make coding easier to read because, you know, having the word sine or triangle or saw in the code conveys much more information than just their numeric equivalent does. The set note command is one of several ways to set the frequency of a voice, and in my opinion, happens to be the best way. This command, once again, takes two arguments, this time the voice and the note index. Like before, the voice argument selects which voice. The note index can be any number 0 to 95. This is because the sound engine knows the specific frequencies of the 96 musical notes C0 through B7 and has sequentially numbered them. Thus, the set note command is a quick way to select chromatic scale frequencies that sound in tune with each other. The sound engine library has named constants for all 96 musical notes as well. Putting those three commands together will tell the sound engine to produce a single tone. Set the frequency, set the waveform, set the volume. And when you get tired of hearing it, set the volume to zero. In part two, we'll spice it up a bit by adding an envelope to that single tone, and then using that feature and an Arduino, create an easy-to-assemble doorbell project that plays a tune when you push a button. If you have an idea or a suggestion or a question, be sure to leave it in the comments. If you're looking to get a sound gen, you'll find a link to my store in the video's description.